If you look at these orbital diagrams, you notice that some orbital diagrams have all the electrons paired up, like neon, and some are like carbon, where you have some unpaired electrons. The name for all the electrons paired is diamagnetic. So neon is an example of a diamagnetic element. All of the electrons exist in orbitals in pairs, where carbon has unpaired electrons, boron has unpaired electrons, lithium had an unpaired electron. If you have one unpaired electron or two or any number of unpaired electrons, that's called paramagnetic. Now writing out these orbital diagrams gets tedious the more electrons you have. If you're trying to do an atom like xenon, you'll have 54 little electrons. So a shorter way to do this involves the noble gases. So for example, if you wanted to write out the orbital diagram for rubidium, instead of drawing 37 little electron arrows, we want to look at the periodic table to tell us what will be common. So for example, anything that occurs on the periodic table after neon has to have more than neon's 10 electrons. But we know that the first 10 electrons will always make this same pattern. So we can use that as a shorthand. What we're going to do is take the element we want to draw out and find the noble gas that's one row above it and all the way at the end of the periodic table. So rubidium, if you go up a row and go all the way to the end, you hit the noble gas krypton. And krypton has 36 electrons in there. So rubidium with 37 electrons, the first 36 are going to look like Kryptons. So we call this the Krypton core, where we write the noble gas in square brackets. And then we only fill in the subshells that come after that noble gas core. So after Krypton, rubidium is found back in the S block of the periodic table. And if you count which row it's in, it's in the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5th row. And the S's start at 1. So after Krypton comes the 5s subshell. And we need one electron. So rubidium will have a paramagnetic orbital diagram with one electron in the 5s subshell. We could do the same thing for iodine. Iodine, if you go up a row and all the way to the end, it also has a Krypton core. So that's still 36 out of our 53 electrons. We have to have 17 more electrons to make sure we have the correct number of electrons for iodine. After krypton came the 5s subshell. That would take us to number 38, strontium. After the 5s, now we're in the D block of the periodic table. And we're in the second row down on the D block. So if you follow on your periodic table, we're at yttrium, number 39. That's the second row in the D block. But Ds start counting not at number 1, they start counting at number 3. So the second row down is not the 3D, it is the 4D subshell. And D orbitals always have five orientations. So in the 4D subshell, there are five 4D orbitals. This will take us all the way to atomic number 48, cadmium. And then atomic number 49, now we're back into the P block of the periodic table. And we're in the 1, 2, 3, 4th row down in the P block. But P's start at 2. So if you count down, that would be 2P, 3P, 
4P, 5P, and P subshells always have three allowed orientations. Everything that comes before that 5P where iodine is found has to be full. So the 5S is full, the 4D is full, but notice I'm still following Hun's rule and I'm putting in the electrons all spin pointing up and then pairing them up only when we have to. So right now I have the orbital diagram of cadmium number 48. To get over to iodine I have to go over five columns in the P block so that means five electrons. So I have the first, the second, and the third electrons then number four and then finally number five. If we do the same sort of thing for thallium, thallium has a xenon core. Xenon takes care of 54 of the 81 electrons. After xenon, number 55, cesium, is in the 6s subshell. And the 6s is full. This would take us to barium, number 56, and notice this is the first place where we hit the F block. Number 56 to number 57, 58, those elements are down in the F block and the first number we hit for the F, the first row of the F is 4F because the S's start at 1, P start at 2, D start at 3, F start at 4, and F subshells, F orbitals, contain seven possible orientations and then after the 4F we're going to go back to the D block of the periodic table and that is the 5D and then finally we'll hit thallium which is back in the P block and that is in the 6p subshell. We know that thallium is going to end up in the 6p so everything that comes before it has to be full. The 4f is full and the 5d we stopped right here we would have 80 electrons that would be the orbital diagram of mercury to get over to thallium we have to add one more so this is the orbital diagram for thallium you can count up 54 electrons for xenon and then you have two more 14 more 10 more and one more so that's 54 plus 27 gives us our 81 electrons.